Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Tom. And this is the park bench. With spooky campfire lighting. Because we started this quite late and I've And we rambled. don't own anything better lighting wise. I've rambled significantly here. But you had three videos while I was away. And this yeah. is my third and final one on Arctic Tail. Because I have I have two specific stories to tell. Are Arctic Tales like DuckTales? Ooh! Uh, yes, yes they are. <laughs> and one, one is a story I did not expect to have. And one is the story of leaving and getting out of there. Okay. Because I think I've covered everything, um, but there are, there are two things. And one is a video that I thought was going to be on my main channel and isn't because it didn't, because I didn't actually learn anything. In the five <laughs> minutes of that video, no one actually learns anything, but it is just me going, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Right. Um, which is not a good main channel video. Like it's impressive, but it's not a thing. Um, so let's start. I'm not going to get to 20 minutes on this, but just in case. Um, there was a charity auction. The, one of the last nights of the voyage. And it being a, a passenger list mostly of old, retired, rich people who have spent $25,000 each to, to be on this, I do not have much of a chance of, of winning anything in this charity auction. And yeah. mostly, you know, it's 10 items, and mostly it's, it's physical things. You don't like things. I don't. I live in a tiny, tiny flat. I don't want a set of, of Russian matryoshka dolls. And I don't want um, uh, various other things. I don't want the map of the voyage that's been signed by everyone because I've got... You don't have a wall big I enough. I don't. I literally do not have a wall <laughs> uh, of the voyage big enough. But one of the items um, is a genuine Soviet-era captain's... Mosquito. Okay, sorry. I thought it was saluting. Um... <laughs> Soviet era captain's hat, one that has actually seen service. Ooh. Yeah. Um, and it comes with something. It comes with the ability to helm the icebreaker for five minutes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. Sorry, helm no. Nice, nice. Um, this is obviously not going to happen for me because there are a lot of people here and Everyone is obviously going to get excited about the prospect of driving a 24,000 horsepower ship for five minutes. Yeah. Through what were fairly rough seas. Um, we, had so, we had calm water almost all the time. We got a bit of rocking. Our icebreakers are nicknamed Polar Rollers because they've got a really, they've got a really shallow hull because, you know how they break ice? They get stung. Yeah. Stung. I mean, either they just push it out the way which they do a lot, but if they can't push it out of the way, they ride up and crack the ice and then go back for another go. And you'll see some of the footage I've got, it's spectacular when we actually, we only went through ice a couple of times, but when we did, like, yeah, it's got, it's got a five inch thick steel hull or something like that. We're basically just, we're, we're just crushing it. You showed me one clip of that. Yeah. It's... You did it with my Osmo camera, which has been on an adventure. Yeah, it has. Thank you for loaning me the Osmo. Um, <laughs> so it, well, like the, the first night, like I woke up thinking, We've fallen off a cliff. We haven't, we just, it was a minor wave. Okay. Um, but that last night and that last day, we were in um, moderate seas, maybe six foot waves, which isn't much in the ocean, but to an icebreaker means you're rocking quite. Okay. So there was the opportunity to steer this icebreaker for five minutes in fairly rough seas. Okay, well, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, because it's a charity auction, is I'm going to bid it up. I'm going to bid no more than I can reasonably afford for something like that, if it's yeah. for charity. Um, and I figure I'm, I'm going to put an absolute limit of $500 on this, which is a lot, don't get me yeah. wrong. It's a lot of money. Um, but I also haven't spent anything for the last two and a half weeks because I've been <laughs> on an icebreaker and everything's been covered. So I figure that's, that's, that's the money I'd have spent on doing, uh, on going out, on meeting friends and everything, and a bit more besides, but sorry, it's worth yeah. it for this. Okay, auction item starts. Now, they've made a couple of errors in this charity auction. No one is drunk yet. <laughs> Easy way to make money. Yep, um, and they've not put this item last. It is the second item out of 10. The, the voyage map is always the last one, but I assume this would be the penultimate one. It's not yeah. it's the second. So uh, Dutch, one of the expedition team, who is a great auctioneer, starts the bidding at $100. And uh, Danny, I think, was in front of me, goes, yeah, I'll, I'll do 100. I think, right, you know what, I'm going to be... I just put my hand up and I say, 300. And there is, I kid you not, an actual... <sighs> <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> we are, like, the map of the expedition later went for $1,800. Wow. So there's only one of them, and it's a one-off, and there was some competition for that. Um, apparently, the, the equivalent of other vessels on the 50 Years of Victory, which is a nuclear-powered icebreaker, one of the expedition crew has seen the item I'm bidding on go for about $13,000. So I went in at 300, I gone, oh, oh okay. Someone on the other side of the room goes, oh, 350. And I just go, with, with entirely fake confidence, go, 400. Silence. <laughs> and Dutch goes, look, I'm not going to drag this out. Um, have we got any more? Have we got any more? No, going once, going twice, sold. So, uh, just behind here, <laughs> where the um, I have, I have a hat. <laughs> it doesn't fit me, it's about five sizes too small. Oh, just that. Oh, doesn't, about five sizes too small there. But, but and um, after I got it, uh, Chris Hadfield gets to go, oh, it's real, that is. This is, this is, uh, like, I think you can pick them up at any Russian military surplus store for about 10 bucks. But, yeah, that, that, that happened. Can I wear it? <laughs> yeah, of course you can wear it. This is actually, this is going to someone else who you know. Um, okay. But, also it won't even remotely fit you. But there you go, that is, <laughs> That is, um, there, yeah, that is, it actually fits you, it actually looks a lot better on you than it does on me. That's because the hair kind of makes That's it look yeah. like it's not about to just fall yeah. off really easily. Yeah. Can you take it off me, please? I've got no hands. <laughs> so I've got the hat. Um, oh, that's crotch light. We don't want crotch light. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the next day, after a bit of back and forth, um, I go to the bridge. And it was going to be, you're going to be steering the ship for, for, but I mean, at this point, there's going to be footage up here because I did try and do a piece to camera, but the truth is I'm just sat there going, ha, 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 for a lot of it. The ship has three settings, and I know this because rather than just sit here, get a photo driving the belt, driving, driving the boat, driving the wheel, um, Chris Hadfield speaks fluent Russian. And Roman, someone on the bridge who I'd, he had a few words of English, we'd kind of talked um, a little bit, um, he was asking about how YouTube works. I, I hope that when he gets back to Russia, he starts up things you might not know are equivalent to his language, because he'll nail it. Um, he, uh, he's being translated by Chris. <laughs> I was like, okay, so the boat is currently in automatic. Uh, okay, switch that here to following. Clunk. Turn, take the brake off the wheel. Okay, you're now steering the boat. <laughs> you are now steering the Captain Klebnikov. How, how big is this ship again? This is, this is... <laughs> the thing is, you got that for a steal, and you were sharing a room with Chris Hadfield anyway, yes. who not only has fluent Russian, he knows fluent technical Russian. But at no point during that five minutes did I ask, how is this steering working? Is it auto safety or anything? I was just too busy going, I'm on a boat, I'm steering a boat, I'm steering a boat. Uh, so it's not a great video, that, but you've now seen, seen the clips of it. Um, they did not put it in full manual mode, which is essentially direct control of the ship's rudder, because no. You'd break it. Because I'd break the icebreaker. But essentially, essentially in that mode. Tom's got icebreaker. Breaker. breaker. <laughs> <laughs> but in that mode, it essentially uh, takes suggestions. I say turn right 20 degrees, and it goes, yes, I will do that as soon as it is safe to do so and steadily. Uh. Should have seen our wake afterwards, it was like that. <laughs> you know the concept of a tank slapper, right? When you're in a motorbike and you get a wobble on mm. and your tank, oh, your yeah, feet, yeah. Ta feet keep in the tank as so you do that, that in an icebreaker. No, too far to the right, okay, okay, fine. <laughs> Overcompensating. No, too far to the left, no, too far to the left. Okay, we're in automatic mode again, that was five minutes. We're good, we are good. <laughs> Which is funny, as someone who's only started driving cars recently, you're suddenly given an icebreaker. Yeah, I was suddenly given an icebreaker. <laughs> that, was, that was helmsman, helmsman, not captain. In no way captain. I was not deciding where we were going, I was helmsman. <laughs> <laughs> this was on the back of seeing the polar bear the previous day. Sorry, ding, and now ding. Yep. This was on the back of seeing the glacier, that I'm being on that round up. This was the end of the voyage, and it was the most improbable 24 hours of the whole voyage. So yes, that hat is going off to a friend of mine that I know it will fit. <laughs> um, and who I also know um, will make something out of it, or with it, rather than just hanging it up somewhere. Um, and the la so the last thing, because that was the last day of the voyage. We're all kind of having this, this weird moment of, well, that's it, that's over. This is the last time we're picking from three options for lunch courses and things like that. Like, we've got used to it. This is saying, good yeah. this is saying goodbye to the crew that we've come to be friends with. Because there were some folks who were very much, well, 
we are passengers. And you know, among the wider population, we are passengers and they are crew, and the two do not mix. And that was meant to be the formal rule, but at the same time, by this point, Danny was going to the birthday parties, the Russian crew, we got to know the bartender, we got to know everyone. Yeah. So it was this, yeah, we're saying goodbye to you guys now. And then we get to, to Resolute, which is our landing point, and it's the- Hell of a name for an end. Yeah, <laughs> hell of a place. Um, the reason that exists is because in 1947, uh, the US built a weather sta- US and Canada built a weather station there, and in 1953, um, the Canadian government just forcibly resettled Inuit from northern Quebec. They literally, oh. like, if you want a dark chapter in Canada's history, it was going, you lot, you live there now. Never mind, it's completely, un- it's completely unsuitable for you, you've never dealt with Poland night before, you live there now, because we need to shore up for the Cold War. It is a horrible chapter in Canada's history. Sorry to bring the mood down there, but, like, no one knows about it outside some of Canada. Wow. Um, we didn't know that until, oh, I didn't know it until I did the research for the video I filmed up there. And we land in Resolute, and it is a place in the middle of nowhere, and it's not supported. You know what I'm saying? Greenland was all these pretty towns, painted, village, painted villages, good support from everyone, everything like that. No, this is, the, I think the Canadians on board were going, how have we, how have we done this? This is, this is not a town that's, that's surviving well. It's all ramshackle, it's all make do and mend. There isn't support for the people up there. What have we done wrong that this has failed? This is not failed, but this is on a shoestring and Greenland looks so wonderful. Yeah. Like how have we not? So we land there and it is stark. And by this point, the snow has come. We started, in, if you look at, look at the videos, the ones oh, I did- Oh, it's summer. The ones I did early, Brown mountains, right? That yeah. kind of desolation, and then halfway through the voyage, winter arrives and it snows. I never considered that. Yeah. Having thought what it was like when we went to Svalbard. Yeah. It wasn't that snowy. No, it wasn't, and it wasn't until halfway through the voyage when suddenly, boom! It's right. white now. There's snow. Okay. There's deep snow. There is snow up to here. Huh. Um, and we landed resolute. Bump, bump, bump past icebergs. Just about get off the boat without uh, getting without getting soaked. Get into a bus. We have to stay at South Camp for a while because there was a, a rumour there was a uh, polar bear in the area. And eventually we get let out to, to look around the town. And then we get to Resolute Airport, which is just an airstrip in the middle of nowhere. Uh, 737, I think it is, lands just. That would we, need to do like half fuel, no luggage, no nothing to be able we to land were, that, right? We had a 50-50 chance of that plane not getting there. Of the passengers who were coming in being stuck in Ottawa or in Iqaluit where it refuelled and a 50-50 chance of us having to go back to the boat to stay another couple of nights until the fog lifted. It was that close. Huh? And I'd, like, I'd have had to, I'd have missed my flight, it would have been travel insurance, it would have been a nightmare for everyone. It was that close. Shortly after we left, 20 centimetres of snow hit and fog moved in and an hour later we wouldn't have got out of there. Huh? But that means that the 60 passengers who are replacing us, as we're saying goodbye to everyone, as we're saying thank you to all these wonderful, wonderful people on the expedition team, as we're saying goodbye, 60 passengers who have no idea what is about to hit them have landed. Because huh. our arrival back in Kangalusawak was calm. We walked down a dock, we got in a boat, we didn't get our feet <laughs> wet, we didn't get anything. <laughs> they get here and they are told, look, we can't get you out there in Zodiacs. Ice has moved in. The waves are too high now. Um, you're all going to have to wait here. And we're going to have to try and get you in by helicopter before the fog arrives. Those helicopters take four... Uh, well, no, when you're not doing sightseeing, they take five and six people. So each run, which is about half an hour there and back, when you include ro- loading, is 11 people. And you've got to get cargo there, and you've got to get the luggage in. The luggage was in a sling under the helicopter. Cool. Yeah. And I don't know, because we haven't heard from them since, because there's no contact with the boat other than required stuff. We have no idea how long it took them to get on there, or if they even did that night. They may have been literally camping at Resolute Airport. Huh. That's how close it was getting at the end to winter has moved in, we're in the Arctic now. We got the little bit of that at the end. And whoever's doing the Northwest Passage trip is going to get a lot. That'll be a hell of a bumpy ride. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. More ice. <laughs> yeah, absolutely all over the place. Um, and the, the thing that put it all into context was the last thing we did before Resolute, which was the bay where Franklin's expedition for the Northwest Passage wintered. Oh. Franklin was uh, an explorer who, who went, tried to find the, the then legendary Northwest Passage, tried to find a sea route through. And he took 92 men uh, on, on a boat 
and they were they were never found again. They they were lost somewhere in the Arctic uh, or perished. Their their ruin their ruins what's that? their remains uh, ruins of the camp remains of the bodies were found decades later, um, and we found the place where they wintered. And it's a it's a regular stop on expeditions like this because there are it's a national park site it's a historic registry there are four grave markers there of the people who died that winter or just before, but you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's the markers and it's this secluded bay that had just changed to winter like the snow had fallen a few days earlier and we're in there and there are there's suddenly this snow and it was this moment of well I'm in modern clothing I am warm. I've got yeah. a full, I've got the same park I bought for, for Norway, um, the, the Lillehammer trip. Um, same one that on, thermal layers under it, proper thermals on, proper muck boots, I'm warm. And shortly after this, I get to go back to the ship and have the final dinner. And you know, you've, you've already dinged me a couple of times for it, but we're gonna go back, we're gonna get a choice of dinner. Like, would you like dessert? Sure, would you like cheese and biscuits? Yeah, they're there as well. <laughs> Wh which of the four wine selections would you like for tonight? Like, it's that level. And meanwhile, here are the graves of four people who had to winter in this bay because they were ice-locked and couldn't go any further and would keep going and would eventually perish. And if you want a sign of what is changing, not just with us, because we had this kind of, okay, this is, this is dark, this is bleak, but when they were doing that, the Northwest Passage was legendary. They wouldn't have found it. It, it was ice locked. Yeah. And now there's a cruise ship going through. There's, <laughs> there's our expedition going through. The other way is the Crystal Serenity. It's an 8,000 person cruise ship with, or it's a several thousand people cru cruise ship with three restaurants and a casino. Yeah. Or eight restaurants. Well, the numbers I don't know. It's yeah. got a casino. It's, it's a big everything. thing with crazy it's a, shit. It? Ma it's one that goes to the Caribbean. And that's going through the Northwest Passage now. And if you want, the kind of wrap-up video. That is my big wrap-up video in Resolute. <laughs> uh, and it's the last one. When you see that one on the main channel, you know that's the last one from the Arctic. It is, this is changing. If we go up there in 10, 15 years in summer, there may be no ice. There may, like, winter will appear. We'll yeah. still get snow. It'll still be bleak and desolate, but it is changing up there. And we, we were lucky enough, we were privileged enough to be one of the people who have got to see that while it's still there. Like, it's going. Like, climate change... Exists. Well, no, leaving that aside, because that's just, <laughs> like, you don't argue that. You just treat that as a fact, and you just pat them on the head, and you let them go. But, and I, that, I've become a lot more blasé about just patting them on the head, because if, I say this in the Ilolisat video, if you don't believe the evidence by now, like, every glacier, yeah. every glacier was in retreat. Everything is warming up there. Every sea ice passage is open where it never was before. Scientific um, and photographic evidence. Everything. You've seen it in person. <laughs> yeah, if you want anecdotal stuff, I can do you anecdotal stuff, but like you can just look at the, you can look at the graphs. <laughs> but it was this moment of going, this is going to be a tourist destination in 20, 30 years, the same way Svalbard is. Yeah. Because suddenly it is going to be easier to get here. You are going to have cruise ships going through. You are going to have ships going through. And one of the books I read, which I'll, I'll put a link to in the description, was um, The Future History of the Arctic. And it just says, this is happening. This is changing. This is what is going to happen now. And it means that some species are going to die out. Polar bears are going to do terribly. Excuse me. Others, was that a mosquito? Yeah. Ow! <laughs> um, that, that changed the tone. <laughs> that changed the tone. Mood whiplash here. That, some species are going to do terribly, but others are going to thrive. And it's not... Oh, God, yeah. It's not the end of the Arctic. It's the end of the current... Arctic. It's the end of the Arctic as we know it. Yeah, it's the end of everything we know up there in the next 50 years. And that's going to happen. We can stop it being a complete disaster by, you know, not continuing to chuck enormous amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, says the person who just took a boat through there and I'm aware <laughs> quite how ironic that statement is. But it's going to be a tourist destination because the new Arctic is going to be open. And that's going to be a heck of a thing. It's the Arctic, Jim, but not as we know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's there a monologue go. and a half. What, that's three it. Monologues? That's a one-hour monologue. Oh my God! I'm sorry, Matt. That You're is so. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That is that is an hour. That is. But the thing is, Ben Brown has done 20 minutes a day of video, and if you want to see 
life on board the Klebnikov and what we got up to in more detail. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, ding me for that one. That's that's fair. Just you know, just if you want to see life on board the Klebnikov. Like if you wanna see picture if you wanna see video beyond mine, if you wanna see someone's experience there, he's really, really good at the experiential stuff. But that was that was my story. That was that was the ones that I can't put because I don't do vlogs. Because I've seen what Ben does. I can't do vlogs. I can't do that. I, we can't do that. We can't spend that much time. Yeah. But if you wanna see that, go see him. Ah. But that was that was my that was my stories of this. That's what I've spent the last three weeks doing. Five weeks by the time you Look see Look in it. the description below this video and the two previous videos. Yep. That's where we will link to everything that he's talked about that needs a link. There's the 20 minutes. There's the 20 minutes. Um, yeah, always in the description. Timing. So, um, as, you, as you see this video, we're going to be somewhere else because we've got some other stories to tell. <laughs> if all goes well, if we don't get, uh, if we don't get into some terrible trouble out there, we will see, and every time we mention a place, we have to point out that by the time you see it on the bench, we have left. We have left. But if all goes well, if it doesn't go well, the first words you hear in the next video will be, it hasn't gone well. <laughs> if there is another video <laughs> after this one. We will see you in West Virginia. A little bit different to the Arctic. A little bit. <laughs> but we're both going this time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Spooky lighting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do. <laughs> I'll do.